Hello and welcome to the beginning of my four-part rope tutorial series for Unity using the hinge joint system. Throughout the series I'm going to show you how to make two types of hinge joint ropes, a basic rope and a dynamic rope, and then I'm going to take the dynamic rope and expand on that to show you how you can dynamically lengthen and shorten it. I'm also going to show you some functionality you can add to your character controller so that your character can grab the rope, climb the rope, and detach from the rope. And this is all functionality from my most recent game, Jam Game, which you can see the entire devlog for here. The tutorials for the rope lengthening and player interaction will come next week, but if they're already out by the time you're watching this, then the links will be in the description. This video is a tutorial for the basic rope. If you want the dynamic rope, you can click on the card above, and there's also a link in the description. If you're wondering what the differences are between the two ropes, the basic rope is prettier, but it's a fixed length, and it's prone to breaking more when it interacted with, so you can get colliders working on it quite nicely. You just have to be very careful with the weights of all the bones in the rope. The basic rope also needs no code to make. This is just using Unity's built-in hinge joint system and a custom animation package. The dynamic rope looks a little uglier because sometimes you can see the separation between the rope segments, but this is a lot more functional if you want to use it as an actual mechanic in your game. So keep that in mind when choosing which tutorial you want to follow. Okay, so the first thing you need to do for this first rope is there is a specific package you need to have installed. In the package manager, make sure you have show preview packages checked and there is a package in there called 2D animation. So make sure you install that package in order to do the rope the first way that I'm doing. Once that's installed, we're going to take the sprite that we're using for the rope and open it up in the sprite editor. I have the sprite mode as single, so keep that in mind. In the top left, you can go into the skinning editor, which is part of that package we just installed. And now we're going to create some bones. And these bones are going to be all the joints that make the rope um, move. So you double click on the sprite to select it. And then with the create bone tool, you can start to create bones straight down the rope. When you're done, just right click in order to exit from that bone creation. Then go to Auto Geometry and click on Generate for Selected. This generates the geometry, which is like the mesh you see around your sprite. And also it should automatically generate the weights too, which is the gradient color you see in the sprite as well. If it doesn't, you can go to Auto Weights here and Generate. There's also, depending on the sprite you're using, you can adjust the weights and the geometry. I have a more in-depth tutorial about this whole process uh, on my channel. You can just see it. I'll put it in the cards above the video right now. So this looks good to me. I'm just going to test it and see how it turns. It's fine. And then click apply when you're finished. Now we can close out of the sprite editor and take that rope and drag it into the scene. I'm going to name it rope one. And we're going to add component sprite skin. And then in this component, click generate bones and that'll create all the bones that you just made under that rope object. What I'm going to do is open up all of these and select all the bones and drag them just directly into the rope objects so that they're all not nested anymore. Next thing I'm going to do in this object is create an empty game object and name it hook. Move that to the top just so everything's in order. And on all of these objects, I'm going to select them all and add a component hinge joint 2D. And that automatically adds a rigid body as well to all of them. Then what I'm going to do is connect all of the bone hinge joints to each other. So you see in the hinge joint 2D of a bone connected rigid body, it takes a rigid body of something to connect to. So I'm going to drag the bone above bone 11, that's bone 10 into bone 11, and then bone 9 into bone 10, and so on. 
And for bone one, I'm going to connect it to the hook. I'm also going to make sure that the hook, see how it's located in the center here? I'm going to make sure that it is in the same position as bone one. So I'm just going to go to bone one and copy the transform and then go to the hook and paste. The hook, I'm also going to freeze the rotation in the Z. The hook doesn't need to turn, but everything else can turn. The last thing to do is go to bone one and uncheck auto configure connection. So this will make it so it always stays connected to the hook so that if we want to move this rope around, we just have to move the hook and bone one will stick to where the hook is and travel around with it. So let me press play and see what happens. So if I move the hook, you can see the rope moves around with it. Great. So we can see that the rope is kind of spinning around at the bottom. It's a bit light. Um, so we're going to fix that. First, I'm going to go through all the bones and use angle limits. So right now, all of the hinge joints, these big green circles are the angle that the hinge can move in. So we don't want the rope to be able to spin around completely in a circle. So we're going to set some limits. I find that the best limits for me are, I think, 60 and negative 60. Except for the top bone. I'm going to keep the top bone limitless. Because this bone can spin around the hook if we want it to. And then everything else will just follow it. I also like to make the bottom bone a little bit even more narrow. Because this one likes to move a lot. So just make sure that use limits is checked for all of them. Before you put your angles in. That's a lot better. Last thing we can do is add colliders. So I'm gonna select all the bones and add, what I like to use is a box collider, but you can try also with an edge collider. Because my rope has a certain thickness, I can make the box collider basically fit around the stock of this plant for each bone. So I'm just gonna adjust those. It's best to make it fit perfectly for each bone. I'm just doing this quickly for the sake of the tutorial, but I would go in and make them all very nice and tidy. And then generally what I like to do is use it as a trigger. It's up to you if you want it to be a trigger or not. I also like to go in and set the tag for all of the bones to be rope this way that when a player eventually collides with it or an enemy or anything like that, you'll know that it's hitting a rope and you could do rope specific functionality. So right now I have the box collider not as a trigger. I'm going to put in a square into the scene just to see how this rope interacts with another object. Looks good. That's good, it seems to interact well with other colliders. Anyway, that's the first rope tutorial finished. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope it helped you. Leave a comment below if you have any other ideas of how this rope can be expanded further. Until then, if you like more game dev content about art and programming and game dev and design and marketing and all nice things game dev, then you can subscribe to my channel and I keep releasing videos every Sunday, so I hope to see you next week. Bye!